All right, what's going on, boys and girls? We're here on this Thanksgiving day with a another reaction video. This is again Ali Ridge Media. I don't know how many more times I can watch these guys. It depends how many more times they get shit wrong. Long story short, I recently had a comment that intrigued me, and I might have been a little bit of a snarky douche. Kind of my thing. Um, long story short, if you are on this channel expecting prim proper, you're on the wrong fucking channel. I give brutally honest opinions. They're my opinions. I, the reason I do these videos, these reaction videos, is to fix factually wrong information as it relates to Linux, specifically. My problem with these guys has been multiple times throughout these videos have they stated factually wrong information. So if I call someone a fucking moron, it's because that statement of information or knowledge that they do not have but pretend to have was fucking moronic. Showing their lack of knowledge in that subject or about that topic. Now, if you have a problem with how I run my channel, scoot on by and don't let the door hit you in the fucking ass on the way through. Because there's this little thing all the way at the top of YouTube. It's great. It's a white space. You click on it or point your finger, you know, poke at it with your finger. It does this great thing. A little blinking cursor pops up into it. You type words into it. And then you either press enter or hit the search glass or the, you know, magnifying glass thing. And results come up magically. Maybe you might want to try putting the words into that and walk right on by my channel. Because what you're looking for ain't going to fucking be here, apparently. Just deal with it. My channel, how I would do stuff, fuck you. You don't like it? See yourself out. I don't care. I'm not looking for retention. I'm not looking at audience growth. That is not my stick. You know, everybody else has their way to run their channels. What you're going to get from me is always brutal honesty. And if somebody says some shit that's factually wrong, that can be easily shown to be factually, that they're factually wrong. Yeah, I'm going to point it out. Whether or not they like it. That's just how I am. Get to step in. So, if cursing, swearing, not safe for work content is your thing, by all means, stay, enjoy, because I have plenty of it. So, let's get into this video. This is uh, Windows versus Mac versus Linux file management by Ali Ridge Media. I hope something's right in this video. All right, what is up everyone? And welcome to Windows versus Mac OS versus Linux. Today we're talking about file management. How does every operating system handle files, their file structure, so on and so forth. So we're gonna start off on the Mac world with Mac OS Mojave. And in Mac OS, we have Finder as our file explorer. Yep. And you can see it right here in action. Apple does a lot of work to make Finder look pretty, to have like, you know, fancy views and whatnot. So yeah, you can change the views, you know, big blocks, you know, lists. There's more a more type of list. Yeah, there's a in some ton of things you can do. And I mean every single operating system has its own, you know, views and whatnot, but Apple does spend a lot of effort to try to make things look pretty essentially. Regardless of how Do note, just because it's pretty doesn't mean it's fucking functional. Apple's got the same problem GNOME does. They know how to take shit out, they just don't know how to put shit back in how everything looks. What file types does it actually support? 
Well, I think we need to talk specifically about the hard drives, SSD storage, whatever. What kind of format mm. are we utilizing Okay, here? okay. So it's very funny you bring that up, Eric, because Apple does a couple different things. They use a GUID partition map, which um, works a little weird now because now they're doing this whole container thing where you have like your drive, and then the, I show you here right in Disk Utility, they have a container disk. And then with inside that container disk, you can have your regular partition, which is a APFS volume. So it's a little bit different than how something like Windows works, or even Linux, though it's a little more similar to that. But cool nonetheless, if you do have multiple operating systems, because theoretically, if it does support APFS, which no other operating system does, so unless you have two versions of Mac OS running on your Mac, you can actually share the same drive and like not be pre-provisioning space. You can actually share that container. Totally useless right now, because nothing else supports APFS, nor is anything likely to ever support that, but cool nonetheless. But let's just say, for example, I want to format this to a Mac formatted drive though, because unfortunately, if it's like NTFS or something like that, I can't put stuff to the flash drive. Wow. So if I want to just uh, erase this and partition this, you have uh, the format type is Mac OS Extended Journal. It's kind of your common Mac format. It is. Um, you have a couple others here. That I don't know actually what the case sensitive journal is. I've never actually used that myself. No, I, I haven't have an experience either. now. Um, you can do MS DOS, you know, FAT essentially, but there's limitations with your file size with that. Yes, so it you is. want to stay away from that for the most part. But XFAT is also great. That pretty much is support on everything, and it just works perfectly. So really, just to sum it up here, in terms of you know a USB flash drive or something, you're going to typically be formatting it to a journaled partition or format, I should say, if you're only going to be using it on a Mac. But if you did want it to work on you know Windows or anything else, then you need to utilize MS DOS FAT, which is FAT32, or XFAT, EXFAT, whichever you want to call it. However, let's take a look at Windows. All right, so now in Windows. Okay. I'll give them, they did a decent explanation on, on Mac. I'll give them that. Now, no end consumer is gonna know what the fuck a container is treat the end user like a fucking moron then when they show they have knowledge then you can up your you know technical talking game with them but generically if you treat them like a fucking moron you're probably more than likely going to be right windows this ought to be interesting Let's see how much of a slant goes that way well we have File Explorer, probably seen it before. And in all reality, it's very similar to Apple's Finder. Does it maybe not look as pretty? I don't know. It's just a File Explorer at you the end of the day. You still have different views and different stuff here, you know, lists and you yeah, know, different so, icons. I, I mean, at the end of the day, they all do, they do the same thing. So it doesn't really matter they all are so far working pretty well however let's talk about supported formats on your hard drives ssds so on and so forth so trevor you want to take that away from me sure i mean this is pretty simple microsoft uses uh, ntfs for all of their like boot drives and things yeah. like that and they don't give apple permission to utilize mtfs so no, they do not so ntfs has been around for a very long time uh, pretty much since like I think the Windows XP days, I think that became more of a thing. Previous to that, you actually a lot of times did format your hard drives, I believe, to FAT still for your operating system. But that's long gone at this point. However, Windows, of course, still supports FAT. We can plug in the lovely flash drive here. Which that is currently formatted, I believe, in FAT32, MS DOS, FAT, whatever you gotcha. want to call so it. So if we were to go ahead and just click format here, we're going to be able to see. Um, as it pops up. Um, default is FAT32, but we have NTFS, which we could do, but would not be as support with other operating systems. Yeah. FAT32 is default. However, XFAT is another great option too, which I do prefer XFAT, generally speaking. I think Eric does as well, yeah. just because you're not having those file size limitations. I think with uh, FAT32, you have like a four gig file limit or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's something stupid like that. Uh, while we are here, before we get into Linux, let's actually uh, format that to NTFS. The 4 gig limit on FAT32 is simply because it's 
32 bit, which has a four gig limit. It's a novel fucking idea. That is why when we have 32 bit CPUs, the max RAM essentially that they can use is for 3.8 to four gigs. That's where their ceiling is. It's a 32 bit limitation, hence file 32 essentially. That's why you have that limitation. I don't know how else to tell you that. So it's not a stupid reason, it's a technical reason. DFS. Okay. Windows makes it really easy to format your drives. You know, you just right click on them, format, done deal. And of course, on the Mac side of things, you have disk utility to do all your formatting as we demonstrated in Mac OS. Anyway, I see that yep, our format, format complete. is complete. So uh, let's now jump over to Linux. All right, so now that we are in. Now this is where the real fun begins. I'm definitely going to be intrigued by this because I, uh, yeah, this is just going to be, I think this is going to be a tr there's going to be a train going down a dirt road waiting for a train accident. In Linux, Ubuntu, what do we actually have for file management? So we have files here, which, which I don't know what this is called besides files. I think it's generic, but I think it's literally what it is. They decided not to put a fancy name on a file exploring. Which I'm perfectly fine whatever, with. It's, yeah. it's files. It is yeah. files. It looks a lot like the Mac. Files is actually a program called Nautilus. It was rebranded, you are correct. Still has a name. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I'll, that's not really that big of a deal. But it still does have a name, nonetheless. In spite of what the team at Gnome thinks. It, it's, sorry, Gnome, you know, it's Nautilus. It's always going to be. Get over it. Finder, it does, it does. Which is not a bad thing. You know, everything's right here, you never want. You can add other locations, you know, go to desktop, documents, desktop, downloads, whatever. It's all here. Now, what kind of views do you have? Great question. So I'm, our views are right here. So we just kind of have this square view to more of a list style. So, so pretty simple. I mean, again, all of these at the end of the day are basically the same. Yeah. Um, they have their own quirks and all that, but they all work at the end of the day. Yeah. Now let's talk about supported files. So Trevor. interestingly <laughs> enough, we did just format this flash drive in we Windows did. to NTFS. So we can go ahead and see if that will actually open here. Now, before we even get to that though, what format is this hard drive right so now? So this should be, and we'll, we'll verify this from our testing, because you can format Linux drives into several different things that are okay. supported. So we will verify what this is, but I believe this is an extended drive. We'll go to disks, that's their uh, okay. built-in. We want to be careful here that I don't mess up all my partitioning. That no, only you took would not me five to times that. to get right. So, like Apple, um, Linux uses a GUID partitioning table as well. So, you are going to see some things that look similar, okay. but not exactly. Now, my partitioning structure here of my internal SSD is a little complicated because I have Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and then all of the appropriate drives that are associated with that, so it gets a little weird. However, this is my Linux partition right here. And you can see it says ext4, it's extended 4, which is just part of the file system that it uses. But besides that, it's kind of what it uses. I, I don't have, this is not where I'm an expert by any means. But again, as the average consumer, which I'm definitely not, I'm a little above that, yeah. they're not gonna know either. They're gonna install, they're gonna click next a bunch of times, which is kind of what I did when I installed Ubuntu. <laughs> I paid attention a little bit more because my weird file um, uh, volumes here, but besides that, it's, fi it's uh, formatted as an extended four. However, just FYI, our USB drive did pop up here. Okay. So that does seem to be perfectly supported. So um, let's try to drag a file in it. Copy mm. here. That works, successfully copied. So that works, which is honestly a, something over Windows, or sorry, over Mac OS. Over Mac, yes, you cannot use NTFS on Mac, but it looks like you can use it on Windows. However, we should talk about XFAT very 
Really? You can use NTFS on Windows when you're on a Linux machine. <laughs> I did. You guys make this too easy. Uh, you mean you can use NTFS on Linux? Yes, you are correct. Very briefly. Unfortunately, XFAT does not support Linux, at least right off the bat. You can get ability to access XFAT drives and you know copy and, and paste and whatnot to those drives, but it's not natively built into Ubuntu, hmm. which is unfortunate. It's not the biggest deal because you can get it to work, but it is something to remember. It doesn't work out of the box. It's not native. Now, my guess is, without doing any more research into this, so please correct me if I'm wrong here, but my guess is that's due to licensing and things like that as well. Usually like we talked about like the codec thing in, in our previous episodes, you know, it's all about licensing. Um, so that's something to look out for. However, I would like to take a look at here. We have that USB drive. What can we format that on? That's Yes, you have to install a few extra packages for XFAT. And from my understanding, as you stated, it is mostly a uh, mostly a licensing issue, from my understanding. Um, I could be wrong, and I will fully admit I am not fully knowledgeable in all of the uh, file systems and what have you. But it is very easy to pseudo apt install the exact things you need for xfat just gonna say so i'll give them that one it's good to look so, into well, let's go ahead and take a look at that do we see format here nope so i think we have to do that through our disk Did he just... Please tell me you did not do what I think you did. Take a look at that. Do we see format here? Nope. So I think we have to do that. Too. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Do we see format here? Nope. So I think we have to do that. Really? Just because an icon... <laughs> An icon pops up on the desktop, and you try the formatting thing. Okay, okay. I'll give them that one. See where this goes. The fact that they're still in friggin' disk is a little disconcerting, not gonna lie. See where it goes. That through our disks application here, which actually might lead us to one of the issues that I've had with Linux, and I believe you have as well. I have. And that's just dealing with formatting and dealing with disk management. Okay, fine. So the little gear icon, I see format partition. So that's at least somewhat easy to find. So we'll format that and we'll see what options we have here. But this is what I was talking about. So just like our internal drive, internal disk for use with Linux system extended for. That's what that okay. that is. Um, then we have NTFS. So we we can fully format an NTFS, that is cool. And then FAT. Keep in mind, that is just FAT, fat. not XFAT. Yeah, just FAT32, essentially. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> I don't know what other means. I don't know how it's formatting it to something different. But. Now, I will say, this version of Ubuntu, you know, it's nice that it has this disk program that will allow us to format, manage yeah. your disks. In some Linux distros, you do have some problems. You know, I think I was using Ubuntu Studio which should be relatively similar to Ubuntu. However, different apps and whatnot, which means it did not have disk last time I was on it. So I had a lot of trouble formatting my disk. Yeah. Which is actually kind of funny because Ubuntu Studio There's about three things in about four seconds that you just rambled off that I want to slap you for. Not going to. I'm being facetious there. Of course. This. Okay. We're going to go on a little trip. I have a 32 gig in, uh, flash drive that I just plugged in. Now, I'm using Unity, mind you. But 
what you did is there's a little pop up in the 1804 version that you're running of GNOME that comes up on the desktop and it comes up in the sidebar. And you right clicked on it, which is essentially the jump list that you would have gotten in Windows 7 or 10. There's no format option in there. Yet, what you did in Windows was you were in the file browser and you right clicked on the in the file hierarchy you clicked on the disk for you know whatever drive it was drive d c e whatever for that flash drive right clicked on it and told it the format reality check so we're going to minimize all this stuff for a second so sorry for looking into oblivion so we have backslash Linux. I'm going to open this. This is uh, 1804 base, so I'm running on the same exact thing, barring using Unity as my desktop. Backslash Linux. This is my uh, USB drive right now. This is where they were at when they were in Windows. Oh, hey, look. Format. Rename. Bob. NTFS. Used for all systems. And that... Internal disk. <sighs> Next. Format. And of course, I have to redo this disk because of a few partitioning things I've done with it. But the option, <laughs> nonetheless, is fucking there if you are willing to actually look. And as far as Ubuntu Studio, no, it does not use disk. It fucking uses Gparted. Different application. So, the partition manager is there in Ubuntu Studio. Uh, you guys make my head hurt. Not going to lie. So, with that said, let's move on before I blow a gasket. I'm trying to be nice this time. Trying to be. Studio is spo supposed to be designed for, you know, photographers, videographers. You know, you would think you'd be like erasing SD cards, formatting SD cards, and maybe hard drives and all that. But there wasn't disks, so I yeah, couldn't Yeah, some them. Linux distros make it a little difficult. I'll even say, even originally, as we were supposed to use uh, KDE, so essentially Kubuntu, that I've had issues with as well. It doesn't yeah. have the nice disks app. That's one of the reasons why we chose Ubuntu to finally do yeah. these, because it just it has everything here. Your mileage may vary depending on what distro you're using, and that's going to be really important for the average consumer. So. People really do want me to blow a goddamn gasket on these videos, don't they? Kubuntu uses essentially Gparted, but with a KDE, KDE partition manager. It's in the fucking distro. Is it quote-unquote user-friendly as disks? No, but here's the thing. Most people shouldn't be using disks either. The amount of formatting people should be doing is basically... Go into the file browser, look at your drive, right click on it, if you're using files or not a list, and tell it to format, and the little pop-up will thing will come up, just like in fucking Windows. You hit whatever you're looking for, NTFS, ext 4 FAT, tell it what you need, then you freaking click next, rename the damn thing, format. Done. I don't know what is so hard. For people to understand that. So just all to keep in mind, but we'll give Ubuntu the credit it deserves for things like NTFS and having disks yeah. here and all that stuff. But at the same time, just watch out if you're using a different distro. 100%. Anyway, now for my opinion. So across... And yet again, shows lack of usage on your guys' part. You know, you, you guys claim to be just above average consumers. Well, average consumer, you guys are kind of showing 
even lower. Just saying. Like, like I, I question your willingness to look further. If Because when I go into a file manager, be it Windows or any Linux distro, I always look at the file structures in the in the tree branch. Right click on it, tell it to unmount if I'm in Linux, tell it to safely eject if I'm in Windows. You know, format the thing. It, it's not rocket science. So the fact that you guys don't even remotely try that in that similar workflow stuff shows me you guys really, really, really are not going full bore when you try like Linux. Like, uh, like if you use the Ubuntu Studio, you know it would have been Gparted. If you use Kubuntu, you know it would be KDE Partition Manager. Like that's some stuff that like it's not rocket science to figure out. Those are tools that I would not really G parting like KDE Partition Manager versus the the front end like KDE front end for G parted. I would not recommend for end users, but they're usable. So I don't think that you guys are really giving it all in these benchmarks and tests and all this other shit that you guys are doing. Like, like I can sit here and yell and scream and I've done it on a few of these videos, but the long short version of this is I think you guys really need to actually run the distro. You've said on one of your prior videos that you ran it for like two months. If you don't know basics of like right click and what context menus come up in the file browser, I highly question your actual usage of the machine or the distro for that matter. Now that is my opinion. So whether or not you like it, that's that limited knowledge and lack there of knowledge is showing that you really didn't dive in with an open mind because the only way you're <laughs> and I'm going to be blunt the the only way any real person is going to take any of these videos seriously especially on the Linux end when you're getting such minor like these aren't minor things these are like big glaring holes in the complaints you guys are making um, about an OS that are just out and out factually wrong. You know, I just, <laughs> you guys have like blown my mind and killed my brain cells essentially with how you guys come across with this. Um, fucking moronic is an understatement. It's a lack of knowledge. You guys can say you've used it all you want, but again, if if you're missing the most mind, like they're not even like small details. These are like basic usage details. Saying that you're fucking moronic because of your lack of knowledge in the subject is being nice. And really, it is really being nice because at the end of the day, I'm not even gonna watch the rest of this video because I'm already gonna bang my head. And I've watched 11 minutes of this and I'd rather actually have my life back. So at the end of the day, I just wish you guys would actually try using it. Incorporate the system as a work station into your workflow, day to day, in and out. Every time you compute, that's the machine you use. Do it for a week, do it for two weeks, do it for 30 days, do it for two months. That is how you determine what is and is not working for you. So for me, I can't watch any more of this video. My recommendation to you guys is legitimately put it into your workflow. Use Linux as a daily driver, in and out, every day. Every time you turn on a computer, that is the machine you go to. Because I don't think that's what you guys are doing. Because you are showing limited knowledge in the lack, just in the simple lack of like 
what a right click in the file manager <laughs> in the file manager brings up for a context menu when it's the very last thing and it says fucking format it's not th that's it so i'm done with this video you guys know what to do rate it subscribe peace